The future is bright with Ethan Kaliak Manis, and we're diving in all day on what we've seen so, so far and what is yet to come. Okay, you are no locked happens, on Golden Gophers. No matter what we're going to do here, we're just going to keep rowing. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota uh, Golden turns out, Gophers. Whatever turns out, we're just going to keep rowing. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're just going to keep rowing, keep rowing, and keep rowing. You're listening to Locked On Golden Gophers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name's Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant, here to talk Golden Gophers with you each and every day of the week, Monday through Friday. And today we're talking about Gophers quarterback, Ethan Kalik Manis. He has the entire fan base excited, and you're going to be hearing about him a lot on this show as we move forward. I have a full confidence in that one, so be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube where we're building our community to make sure you never miss out on the latest and greatest and wherever you get your podcasts at Locked On Golden Gophers. Now, like I said, today we're talking about Ethan Kelly McManus and the Gophers are heading into 2023 with a whole lot of new and it might not feel like that when you're looking across the entire conference with all the changes at multiple different areas, but the Gophers are heading in with a new offensive coordinator or two really, a quarterback coach, a new quarterback coach to the program, still internal, but new to the position a new full-time starting quarterback for the entire season, hopefully barring health, and new, deeper lineup of pass catchers. Now, the whole room isn't new in that sense, but there are a lot of new additions on scholarship there. So all of that, all of that is supposed to usher in and has a lot of people assuming that Minnesota will be building around their new quarterback and developing the offense around him. Now, last year and the year prior, and even the year prior to that, the offense was really built around Mo Ibrahim, and then the passing was built off of the run game. Well, is that going to remain the same, or is that going to look to shift to build solely around this quarterback that looks to be the future of the program and the top talent or a key piece to what will be the focal point of this offense. Now, it does look like the Gophers are trending towards that direction just with some of the changes, some of the new additions, what was prioritized in the transfer portal, the late additions to the 2023 class. All of that leans towards the Gophers should be passing more in some capacity. Now, it shouldn't be hard for the Gophers to pass more in some capacity because they've never finished above 100th in the nation when it comes to pass attempts under coach flex so that looks like it should hopefully be changing we'll see if it does indeed change in this 2023 season but let's talk about Ethan and let's talk about why this is happening he is a redshirt freshman that came in and started four and a half games due to the injuries of Tanner Morgan and due to the opportunity needing to be called up earlier, the full intention was Tanner Morgan was going to play the entire season in 2022 and the future would be in 2023. Now that didn't happen because Tanner Morgan had some concussions and you always want to protect the players with those. So Ethan came in. Now he passed for 946 yards on 54.1 completion percentage with three touchdowns and four interceptions. Now, as I read that, you may be thinking, Oh, well, that doesn't sound that great. And you're right, it doesn't. But there are a lot of missing context with those numbers on top of the fact that watching the film and seeing what he did on tape is a lot better than what those numbers just jump out by looking at a box score. So box score watching is not ever going to give you the full picture. And this scenario is definitely a time like that. But the missing context, it doesn't take into the count that two of those four interceptions came against Illinois at the end of the game 
in garbage time where the entire team morale was low. The team had already basically been defeated. And one of those two interceptions was on a pass that the wide receiver just completely gave up on the route on the play. And it turned into an interception. The other one, both of them coming in just pure huck and chuck, throw the ball down the field, try to create an opportunity. And that's not the typical flow of the game, especially when you're coming in with the final like three minutes of the game. So not full context of those interceptions, but in the moments of starts and legitimate opportunities to be in the game, like the Nebraska game or the beginning of the bowl game before he got hurt, Kelly McManus was taking care of the ball. He was making smart decisions. He was making wild plays and you like to see it. It also doesn't really show you how tight the Gophers were holding the reins when it came to Ethan Kelly McManus playing in this season up until that Wisconsin game. Now, up before that Wisconsin game, they only allowed Ethan to go over 15 pass attempts in one game. Now, he'd played in like six at that point. I believe he had started in about three and he had played in bits and pieces of three other games, but they only allowed him to go over 15 of passing attempts in one of those games. And even that was solely due to a wide margin in the score differential, which was the largest gap in score by far in the Penn State game. It was the only blowout loss where the Minnesota lost outside of two scores. And so, yes, you see more pass attempts there. But even then, it was only 22 in that game. In a game you lost 45 to 17, you still only passed about 22 times. Outside of that, prior to the Wisconsin game, Ethan didn't get the opportunity to pass the ball more than 15 times in one game. So they were holding the reins real tight. And as soon as they kind of let him go, they let him pass for 29 attempts on Wisconsin and he balled out. They let him pass for nine attempts in the first quarter and a half of the bowl game before his injury and he balled out. So it's just like as they loosen those reins, you start to see the development, things clicking and it all coming to fruition. Now, it finally, lastly, it does the numbers themselves don't take into consideration how in the Iowa game and other games, Ethan was slinging the ball efficiently. So in the Iowa game, he started seven for eight for 87 yards. And uh, then after that, Minnesota completely abandoned the passing game up until they had to play. They were on a third or a fourth in like seven or 10, somewhere in there, setting the tone. Don't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head. And it was a soul, you have to pass the ball to get this first down type of situation, which turned into a tight window interception that bounced off of the receiver's hands into the D back. And again, that was again, one of those interceptions, one of the four, it's just, again, one of those situations where it wasn't ideal for the young quarterback. You start off hot seven for eight, and then you basically abandon the entire passing game until you have to throw the ball. The defense knows you're throwing the ball and plays against the pass specifically. And then you have an interception there. And then finally to end that game, you throw up four deep shots, trying to get down the field to try and win the game with like the final minute of the game. So you start out seven for eight, and then you finish about seven for 13, seven for 14 in that game. I mean, that just makes his numbers look worse as opposed to what actually took place in the game. So context is everything when it comes to Ethan Kaliak Manis. And I even tweeted out at the end of the regular season that in terms of QBR in 2022, Ethan Kaliak Manis finished in the Big Ten as the number three quarterback in the entire conference, only behind CJ Stroud and JJ McCarthy, both quarterbacks which led their teams to the playoff. Now, Ethan Kalik Manis was right behind them, ahead of Aiden O'Connell, ahead of Talia Tungalip Vailoa, ahead of Sean Clifford, ahead of Tommy DeVito, ahead of Peyton Thorne. And yet, when we head into the Big Ten season, you'll see his name probably behind some of those guys just because people give in to the hype and don't look at what actually was on the field. But let's look at it even more. So in his four and a half starts, Ethan was 745 pass yards, three touchdowns, two interceptions, 119 rushing yards, and a 56% completion rate. Now, yes, you want to see the completion rate tick up a bit, but 
it will come with more experience and less huck and chuck like we saw in the PSU and the Iowa starts. Now, overall, he had a PFF grade of 75.0. He had four big time throws and four turnover worthy plays. And the average time to throw was actually relatively quick. He was getting the ball out of his hands in 2.84 seconds, which is really good. You love to see it in those in that two range, especially. But in the mid to lower twos is like you're you're dishing, you're getting it out of your hands, you're processing, and the offense is humming. So you like to see that. But like I said, that was just in his four and a half starts. But if you really dive in deep, you really look in close, you'll see that he was really trending in the right direction once the wheels came, training wheels came off and he was allowed to pass the ball. So in that final one and a half games, the Wisconsin game and the game he was starting in the bowl game prior to the injury, 389 yards, two touchdowns, 86% completion rate, two big time throws, zero turnover worthy plays, and his quickest time to throw, which was 2.42 and 2.49 against solid defenses. So you're talking about when they finally let him go, when they finally were like, yep, it's your team. Let's do this. Let's go around you. Let's make it happen. He was humming. He was humming. He was efficient. He was not turning the ball over. He was making smart decisions. The completion percentage went up. And that's just looking at the stats. But let's talk about his leadership and the intangibles. That's what we're going to discuss coming up next. But before we do that, this show is brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online. Bet Online is where you need to go when it comes to sports betting info, analysis, news, even the latest podcasts you can find over at Bet Online. And you can find it from all the professional leagues, amateur leagues, anything you can think of. Bet Online will have the numbers for you. So you definitely want to check that out if you're looking to make a bet, if you're looking to know the odds, even if you're making a family bet, you're making a little friendly wager with the family. Check out the odds over at Bet Online so you can put yourself ahead of the game. Bet Online is where the game starts. All right, Gophers fans, thank you for listening to Lockdown Golden Gophers and making us your first listen when it comes to Gophers Daily Sports. Now, we got our first hockey episode coming up this Friday where we're going to have Alex Micheletti join the show. And I'm hoping to get a few guests for the next few weeks each time we talk about hockey. And hopefully we'll be having Alex Micheletti and uh, Sam Ekstrom as well heading to the show. And I got one more in the works. So hopefully that'll be happening where we'll have those guys kind of rotating between Fridays and talking some gophers hockey that pride on ice so definitely be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of that information now we're talking about Ethan and we're talking about what makes him special we talked about the stats now let's talk about the player the intangibles the leadership that he brings now you're talking about a player that can throw off of multiple arm angles that can throw off platform <clears throat> has the ability to move outside of the pocket an absolute cannon for an arm I've heard nicknames such as the Greek gunslinger or the Greek rifle. I've tried to make it happen with the magic eight ball. And we'll see if he keeps rocking that number eight. But what I'm saying is the excitement is there. You see the ability is there. And both from spring and fall ball, watching up close and personal firsthand, I can tell you that you see the moments that just make you say, whoa, like, wow, how? I remember a play where they practice in the stadium, in Huntington Bank Stadium, where they're doing a red zone drill and Ethan dropped it between a safety and a uh, linebacker that were both double uh, coverage on the tight end, Brevin Spanford, at the back of the end zone, and he dropped it in a bucket. I'm saying like the tiniest bucket you find, dropped it in there for a touchdown play, and I was just like, whoa, eight, this kid's for real. Sign me up. You see it on the field. We saw it in glimpses when he was on the field. Now you see it even in the practice fields. And we've even heard from multiple teammates, both current and former, like Coney Durr, like when we had Brevin Spanford on the show, that talk about how Ethan carved up the scout or the defensive ones when he was on the scout team, even when he first stepped in on campus. The talent is there. Everyone's seen it. Everyone notices it. Everyone is excited by it. And even coming from a previous Gopher starting quarterback, Adam Weber, who talked to Chip, Chip over at the Strib, uh, he said to him, the glimpses that we see at times are like, wow, the kid has something what we haven't seen in a long, long time at the quarterback position. 
and that that three areas stood out the most, and that's his size, his arm strength, and his demeanor. And the final one might be the most impressive, and that was most important to his success as well was the demeanor and not being able to get rattled. Adam Weber also said, it seems like he just doesn't get rattled easily. Even when there are mistakes, he doesn't seem to get flustered, which is hard to teach. It's a personality trait in quarterbacks. And so, like I said, yes, the arm strength is impressive. We've seen that. The ability is impressive. We've seen that. Clearly they're there. But if you listened to the show and you've been listening to the show, you know that the presence and no stage being too big is anything new. We talked to Ethan and Dino's dad, Alex Kaliakmanis, who spoke with me and he said straight up that he was not he was not surprised by what happened even in his first start in Penn State in the whiteout game in an atmosphere that was hostile. He wasn't surprised by it all because both Ethan and Dino are passionate students of the game. They have huge gift that they have each other and they both played a huge part in each other's success, but they were always putting in extra reps together, always reviewing the film, reviewing the playbook together, route concepts, coverages, and so on. And then on top of that, he said that they're technicians and they always have a focus on the little things, the mechanics, the footworks, the route running, the timing. So when it's time, when it's time to work, when it's time to do what people might have hesitations to do, they are at the front of the line, they're on a different level, and they're ready to get to work. But when I asked about specifically how Ethan re responded in his first game at PSU in the whiteout game, his dad said that he was it was completely what he expected, and he knows that Ethan is going to get better and better, and that's just how he's built. Ethan's a leader and a warrior, and he has too much moxie to let a whiteout crowd get the best of him, even at Penn State. He has that gift of swagger that great QBs have. Personally, he saw great things, and he saw some things that also could be improved. Now, we saw that throughout the year, too, and we saw the improvements made, so you like to see that, but overall... The, he wants to be great. He wants to win championships and he has lofty personal goals. At the end of the day, he came here to win and be a key contributor for Gophers football. So I can assure you that Ethan's going to be the real deal. Ethan is ready for it. Ethan's going to work. And he's been showing that even with the coaching departures, even with the chaos that's at hand. So you're talking about intangibles, check. Presence, check. Swagger, check. Motivation and drive, check. That just leaves leadership, which we've been seeing in glimpses on the field, especially in the final few games, but I even believe more so in this offseason with the coaching changes, with things that are maybe wouldn't be easy to deal with being a younger player, you know, replacing a quarterback that has been a record holder and not dealing with the what's going to happen, who's going to start and handling it with the most maturity as far as always giving love to two and showing Tanner Morgan the respect and the thankfulness and just even going to thank him on Twitter for everything he's done for him and that it was their relationship is strong. On top of that, you talk about he, he tweets about his excitement for 2023, even coming off an injury in the bowl game where people are concerned. And he's like, nah, 2023, be prepared. On top of that, when the OC, whom he's wanted, he came here, initially committed for, to play for Kirk Straka, who leaves, then comes back, then leaves again. And the first thing that Ethan comes out and says to fans on Twitter, to teammates, to whoever, is I love this culture, I love this team, and I can't wait to get after it this offseason with the guys. Leadership. It's subtle, but in the moments, in the timing that it happens, it's exactly what's needed. The future is bright and the sky is the limit. And when it's all said and done, anything could be, the ceiling for him could be immense and it could be crazy. And what could it be? What could it look like coming down? What are the things that he could be striving towards and going for when it comes for the Gophers football program? That's how we're going to close this thing off. Coming up next. All right, Gophers fans, if you haven't yet, be sure to check out Locked On College Basketball 
we talk about Gophers basketball here, but if you can't get enough when it comes to March Madness and the, the conference tournaments coming up, definitely give Locked On College Basketball a follow and they'll give you all the latest information when it comes to what's happening in the college basketball world. Now we're closing this show off really quickly with just what could be in the waiting for quarterback Ethan Kelly McManus as we move forward into these next few years with him as the starting quarterback. Well, what opportunities lie ahead in my opinion is first off records and legacy. He has the ability now to go out there and potentially start another three seasons for the Gophers, put it all on the line. And it looks like, there should be the opportunity for more passing. The pass attempt should go up. It looks like we're really going to build this offense around his skill set with running backs that can catch the ball, with a deeper wide receiver room, with uh, tight ends that are coming in and being more effective in the passing game now. I think that we're going to see an uptick in the pass attempts, but hopefully even in the production and the efficiency, even if the pass attempts doesn't go drastically up, which means more opportunities and more pass attempts should give him more looks to set his own legacy, to break a few records in there, to be something that we haven't seen here with the Gophers in a long time, just due to the talent alone. Now, production-wise and Effort wise, we saw it from Tanner Morgan, and Tanner Morgan did great things for the program. Now, you pair that with an, uh, a more naturally talented skill set as well, who learned from and was trained with and coached up by Tanner Morgan, who had great aspects of leadership, great aspects of understanding and processing the field. And you pair that with the natural talent as well, the sky's the limit. And he can definitely come in here and be a quarterback at the top of some of those record books or in the top five of a lot of those different record conversations for the Gophers. So that's the first thing to look forward to is records and legacy with Ethan. I think he can be a very schedule, a very special quarterback that can put his name into the conversation with the Gophers greats. Now, the second thing that you can tr look for and what opportunities lie ahead is continued growth of the program. Because as Ethan does better, as Ethan shows that talent, as Ethan makes the plays that we haven't seen from a quarterback, those wild plays, those wild factors, and keeps that swagger about him, that confidence about him. As you see that more in big games against your Ohio States, who we take on this year, against Michigan, who we take on this year, against UNC, who will have a Heisman candidate quarterback in Drake May. As he's put on those big stage games, if he can show that he has that ability, that talent, that moxie about him to hang in there with all those type of teams. Look, that doesn't just make the fans go, ooh, I like this kid. It doesn't just make the TV analysts go, ooh, I like this kid, the media saying, look, we told you, this kid is the truth. But it also tells other recruiting prospects, other kids looking in the transfer portal, like, oh, this Minnesota team, it's different. It's not just run. It's just not just run, 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 and strong defense. This quarterback's legit. I want to play with that quarterback. They've got something building up there, something special. I want to play with that. The better he does, the more wow factor, the more intrigue that he generates it only helps the program grow and if those wow factors if those big plays if those moments translate to wins and the talent is shown like i said it can lead to more quality talent coming in to dinky town and the final thing that's way off we're not going to think about it now but if he does all these things that i'm talking about the opportunities that lie ahead he ends up in the record books he creates this legacy he shows the wow factor he shows the talent he brings others to minnesota if all of that happens in a perfect world a perfect scenario you could be talking about a gopher quarterback to head to the nfl for the first time in a very long time will it be a first round pick will it be a second round pick I mean, if if I had to put my salary down on it, I had to give you my best gut feeling, no, I'm not going to bet on that. But could he be a quarterback that sneaks into a day three conversation and can fight his way in camps and find an opportunity through his talent and through what he showed and build over his college career? I mean, Tanner Morgan was getting NFL hype and tout and looks from... Mel Kuyper from Todd McShay 
after the 2019 season. So if Ethan can come out here and help lead a team like that, say we have a eight and four season in the 2023 difficult schedule season, but they put teams on notice like Michigan or like a UNC and people are seeing him in those big games. Like, Whoa, this kid's legit. Then you head into 2024 and all of a sudden he puts together an 11 win season and goes out there and is competing with the top dogs in the big 10 against USC's and UCLA's and all of that puts together an 11 win season. Then he goes into his senior year and puts together another 10, 11 win season. Look, the NFL will pay attention. So the sky is the limit, and it's going to be an exciting time with Ethan Kelly McManus at the helm. And just get ready, Gophers fans. Get ready and appreciate it. And thank all those before him that helped lead the way and lead the charge to build the program to what it is so far. But we can keep going up. That's going to do it for us on today's episode of Locked on Golden Gophers. Thank you for listening. Please be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube and leave a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. I'll see you tomorrow. This is Kane Rob signing off. Row the boat. Sky Yuma. Go Gophers.